Jesus, for your grace, your mercy, your favor upon my life. I am in your presence. Give me the grace to remain in your presence by your word and your spirit in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Shall we clap for Jesus? You may be seated. Just a quick one. Uh, 10th is September. We are having a covenant Sunday. 10th September. We are having a covenant Sunday. And what is covenant? That is the question you need to ask you. You are a Christian, you are a child of God. Why again this man talking about a covenant Sunday? There is what we call when you are building foundation. The strength of every building starts with the foundation. The problems that we are facing now is from the foundation. And when you, you know you make a covenant, whether with uh, your fellow human beings, anything you think that, let's make a covenant. No one can break that covenant. It is only Jesus. There is no covenant without a sacrifice. Tell your neighbor, say, there is no covenant without a sacrifice. Yes. What can support and back your covenant is the sacrifice that you, you give. The first covenant, we all read the Bible. The second covenant, we all read the Bible. So that is, I will not say much for today. By the grace of God, come 10th September. This is a very serious issue. Those who are not spiritual may not take it serious or see it as important. Yes, because of what is happening nowadays, you know, in our churches. But those who are spiritual, you can go and ask your father in heaven, what is this? If truly you are such a person in your heart, God will reveal this to you, the meaning of this Covenant Sunday. That is September 10th, September. Thank you. Let's go to the book of John. John 4, verse 10. I'm still, the issue is no longer how powerful your message is or the way we name, you know, we give titles to our messages. The center of every message is Jesus. No matter how powerful your title can be, as long as it is not for Jesus, people will enjoy what you are saying, but they will benefit nothing. So the center of everything now is Jesus. The case breaker is Jesus. The healer is Jesus. The one who can destroy a charm is Jesus. The one who can deliver you is... So everything is... Jesus. He is life. Verse 10. John 4 verse 10. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God, and who is it that asks you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would give you, I mean given you, a living water. The woman answered, Sir, that is the woman now. You have nothing to draw water, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Twelve. Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it himself, and as did also his sons and his life stop? Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks from this water will be thirst again. 14, whoever drinks the water I give 
Let me repeat this. But whoever drinks the water I gave them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I gave them will become in them a spring of water welling up into eternal life. I want to live eternal life. That is the purpose of this message. Jesus answered the woman, if you knew the gift of God, and who is the gift of God? That is Jesus. Jesus is the gift of God to human beings. Meaning, you cannot live without Jesus in you. This is why he was telling the woman, if you knew the gift of God, she would have asked him for a drink. The woman said, you have, you have got nothing in your hands, and this water is too deep. And you are talking about a living water. Are you greater than our father Jacob? He gave us this world to us. He himself drank from it. His sons drink from this. Including his livestock. What are you talking about, sir? Jesus said in 13, everyone who drinks from this water, who drink, who, I mean, who drink, will be thirst again. But whoever drinks the water I gave them will never thirst. He is life. If you drink him, drinking him doesn't mean that you need to, uh, to pound Jesus and put it in the jar or a cup. Then, no, it's to believe in his word. He become now part of your life. He will put his spirit in you. Are you there? If you read Isaiah 44, verse 3, you find that he said, I will put this water. From there, he said, the spirit. If you go to Revelation, it's the same thing. So water is life. Jesus said, I am the living water. If you drink my water, meaning if you woman, you knew who I am, you would have asked me a drink of water. The woman said, sir, this wall is too deep, and you have got nothing. How possible that you, you give me a living water? People of God, it is now, you know, giving me, you know, sometimes a, a, a sort of worry. Wow. Because people are no longer going to church for salvation. They are going to church for two things. It's either for breakthrough, or to be a member of the church. That is a long perception. This is why this woman was challenging Jesus to say, look, our forefathers, in fact, she said, are you greater than our father, Jacob, who gave us this world? Because it came as a gift of life. Before Jesus came to this life, life was lost. There was no life. People were doing things according to what they think this is the way. Salvation was no longer, you know, clicking in them. All what they want is to satisfy this flesh. I'm learning because I was looking at time, but uh, this message is very, very important to you and me. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, everyone who drinks this water will be first again. But whoever drinks the water I gave them will never be thirsty. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up into what? Eternal life. When Jesus, you know, take over your life, it's automatically that you are saved. Nothing that can hinder you, neither separate you from him. Because you become one. And that assurance that you go to heaven after this life. Are you there? Are you there? Drink Jesus. Drink what? 
This is the question this woman asked Jesus. In verse 11, Sir, the woman said, You have nothing to draw water, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us this well and drank from it? I want you to know that no matter how powerful you are or you feel as a human being, you are not powerful without the living water in you. The living water in you is Jesus. Is there anyone who can kill Jesus? Is there anyone who can charm Jesus? The answer is no. Reading the Bible, quoting the Bible from Genesis to Revelation does not qualify one to be a child of God. Not until when you allow Jesus to be part of your life. If you eat food, you need water. No one can survive without water. This morning you take a shower. In fact, we drink water every day more than food. Water makes your blood, you know, to circulate all over your system. Meaning, if you drink Jesus, that is, you believe in him, he will sustain your spiritual life to give now strength to this what? Physical body. And this woman was a prostitute, if you don't you know. She started now breaking, you know. Uh, she will twist uh, you know, her legs. Sir, you don't have any cup in your hand. Then you are talking about water. Which water are you talking about? She thought maybe Jesus was talking for uh, something, you know, uh, rubbish. She was trying to entice him. Jesus said, go and go your husband. He said, sir, I'm not married. He said, yes. You have said the truth. He said, are you the Messiah? I want you to believe that Jesus is life. Money is not life. Education is not life. Marriage is not life. Children is not life. All these things are just gifts. They are all blessings. The life in you is Jesus himself. Living without Jesus in you, anything can take your life prematurely. Anything can destroy you. What can stop a satanist or a witch to limit your life without Jesus in you? You can gang up to fight someone with Jesus. You will not win that battle. Because one with Jesus is majority. Even if you are one million because their life is in that person, you cannot bring that life down. Being a human being doesn't mean that you are life. No. You are like a vessel without a driver. Not until you allow the driver to enter your life. That's when you become what? Life. Eating, drinking, enjoying this life. That is not life. This message, I don't think so I can manage to let me just leave it like this. But I want you to believe Jesus that he is life. As long as yes, remember the last word he said. He said this water will spring up and entered into what? Eternal what? Eternal life. This is why we sing Eternal, eternal life. I want to live eternal life. God save my soul. 
marrying and bearing so many children or running a company, it doesn't mean that you are a successful person in this life. No. Lelo Yesu ngaba muli imwe. Ah. You sleep like a baby, you walk like a baby, even where they are planning to kill you. The life in you tells that no one can kill you. I am the life. It is the body they can afflict, but they cannot remove life from you. So drink who? Jesus. He is the living water. Thank you. God bless you.